Assalamu alaikum. This is Megan Wyatt answering your question here at About Islam. So you've got a couple of different things in your question, but I think I'm going to jump to the most important one for you, and that is should you pursue getting married if you're not sure that your sex drive is the same, that your interest in sex is the same, or that you will be emotionally and physically available to somebody else? Um, and I've got a couple of pieces from that. One, because you're recovering from what you believe was a cult that you were part of at one point in time. Uh, and you've been trying to develop yourself since those experiences too, uh, that you believe that you are autistic and wondering if that has contributed to uh, how you relate to others. So I think there's a couple of, of things here. For the autism part, I would say that I'm not qualified in any way to address that. But alhamdulillah, we live in a time where there are many, many resources for individuals who are autistic. And as you know, there's a, a, a varying degree of autism. And so perhaps for you, what would be one of the, the best first steps would be not only to educate yourself further on autism, but if you haven't done so, to get an official diagnosis um, from someone who specializes in this field. And then also to learn more about what are, do other individuals who are autistic do in marriage. Many people who are autistic do get married. And again, depending on how the autism is impacting your interpersonal relationship skills, um, your social skills, your, your emotional level of opening up, things of this nature. Um, all of that's going to come into play in terms of what does it mean for you to move forward having, you know, having, you know, having a spouse and getting married. So I would say first, you know, really take time to investigate this, to talk to people who are experts in this field, to get their advice um, so that you have a clear picture for yourself. Um, aside from that, Everybody has to learn on the ground in marriage. Um, everyone comes into marriage and there's, a, there's an adjustment period of learning what it means to have an intimate relationship with another person. What are their needs? What are your needs? How do you communicate them? How does he communicate them? What are some things that are important to you? What are some things that are important to him? You know, and, and so there is a learning curve for everyone in relationships. And so also understanding that no matter what, there's going to be an adjustment period for you. There's going to be time for you to figure out how to connect with another person in a way that's really different than anyone else you've ever had a relationship with. And the better educated you are about yourself, your strengths, and maybe some of the areas you feel a little bit challenged, the better you're going to be able to communicate that to someone else so they understand you, so they can appreciate uh, what you're asking, what you're needing, what you're trying to communicate, so they can understand um, the things that you do verbalize and maybe some of the things you don't verbalize. So the better you know yourself, the better off your next relationship and child is going to be. Now as for the second piece where you've mentioned that your sex drive doesn't seem to be as high and you're concerned about whether or not you can fulfill the rights of somebody else, this is pretty hard for just about anybody to answer because no matter where a person starts in marriage, marriage is a long journey. So even if somebody was like, yeah, I definitely have a high sex drive, I'm absolutely certain going into this marriage that I'm going to be available to myself my spouse, you know, seven days a week, um, you know, that could change. That can change six months into the marriage. That could change two years into the marriage. Um, somebody else starts off feeling like they've never really been interested in intimacy because they've never had experience with it. And that once they get married and they have experience and they find out it's something that they enjoy and they have a spouse who takes care of their needs. And then now that person is interested four to five days a week. Really, honestly, I've counseled so many different people. There isn't like a rule to go by. What's most important ultimately is marrying a person that you feel safe with, that you feel emotionally comfortable with, because that's the person that you can build that physical intimate relationship with. It's something that you build, it's something that you develop. Um, it's, it's not often something that just people get married and then everything's like perfect, you know, from there on out for the rest of the marriage. There's an ebb and flow of desire depending on your emotional state, your spouse's emotional state. There's the physical component to things, of course. Um, there's life and things happening, stressors and things that affect both people. So again, it's a part of marriage and it's a part of that piece of communication and working together as a team to ultimately love and take care of each other. And so even if that drive isn't there in the sense that you feel this absolute desire and need, it doesn't mean that, you know, you can't be in your relationship and then turned on and then, you know, brought into being in the mood. Um, not everybody feels all the time like having sex. A lot of couples actually have to schedule it. This is usually like down the road when they've got kids and stuff, but they have to schedule it and make time for each other and then spend time getting themselves into the mood because sometimes people don't feel their sex drive because of stress, life, work, 
job, kids, you know, different things that are going on. So there's so many different ways to be successful. So don't let your fear of that hold you back. Most important is, do you feel ready to open yourself up emotionally to another person? Do you feel ready to be committed, you know, in a marriage, in a relationship? Is this something that you're excited about? It's something that you would like. And again, utilizing resources so that if there's a question in your mind, if there's a concern that you have, you know, spend some time, you know, diving into that and becoming more educated so that you can go into this process a little bit more aware of yourself. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you in your journey. Take care. Assalamu alaikum.